camera on the end of this, and when you place this into the patient's airway, you see a uh, blow-up view of the patient's airway on the screen, and it can direct you to do your intubation. So you place this in the patient, and then on the scope you see the patient's airway. And uh, I have a video of this uh, as well from our clinic. So they're going into the patient's mouth. You put it in and immediately you see the epiglottis. And there's the vocal cord opening uh, right there. There's the glottis. The endotracheal tube is right there, and they put it right in. So it really facilitates intubation. It makes intubation really easy. On a patient with a good airway, uh, anybody can do it. On a patient with a difficult airway, just about anybody can do it. It's a very, if the patient gets their mouth open wide enough, and you get that in their mouth, uh, it really makes it uh, uh, easy because you have such a great view of the uh, cords. And uh, you can go in there with a conventional laryngoscope and see nothing. You put this in there and it, it looks like this, it's just a, a grade one view. So this is a, a really an essential instrument for intubation, especially in difficult airways. This is a video taken from the screen. It has a little uh, port where you can download a video onto a thumb drive. Last thing uh, in intubation technology is a fiber optic video laryngoscope uh, or a fiber optic video bronchoscope, depending on how long they are. But this thing also attaches to a, uh, a video monitor and it has a, uh, a fiber optic uh, camera and light source and you can control it with um, controls. So our residents are really good at this because they're used to uh, playing video games. And so they are really adept at maneuvering this thing. And um, this is what that looks like. You put this in and then pass the endotracheal tube, fits over top of it. And uh, you uh, put this thing all the way into the trachea, visualize the carina. And then once it's in place, you just pass the endotracheal tube and it just follows that pathway and it goes right in. So for patients who have limited or no opening that need to be intubated, uh, this is how you do that. So they're going to go into the patient's mouth here. The patient has a, a, a special airway in so they can pass this thing through it. But you'll see on the screen, what they're looking at that blue is the plastic airway. They're going to get beyond that. But this is what they're seeing on the screen as they pass this in to the patient. So now they're seeing the epiglottis. the glottal opening. Now they've entered the trachea. You can see the tracheal rings. And at the bottom there, there's the right and left main stem bronchi, the carina. You can see it right there. And now they're going to feed the other tracheal tube over that. As they withdraw, you can see the movement of the endotracheal tube. Okay. They did that in an awake patient. She couldn't open her mouth. She had airway issues, and they sedated her a little bit. They anesthetized locally her airway and did that while she was awake. You can see her moving, and they're, they're holding her hand. Okay. So that's 
So this this is, has great utility for that type of situation. And so all these things are, are wonderful devices to have, and we all like our gadgets, but this is making anesthesia um, available to the patients that before um, we could put them to sleep, otherwise they would probably uh, uh, die from it, from the anesthetic. And then just lastly, we talked about uh, simulation. We have a center in Pittsburgh, it's called the Wiser Center, and it's a big human, uh, high fidelity human simulation center, and all the medical um, professionals use it, and the, the, uh, the dental uh, uh, school uses it, our dental students rotate through there to do a medical emergencies training. Uh, we made the cover of our alumni magazine uh, at the center, and this just shows that we've got a course for dental students, we call it DOMES, Dental Office Management of Emergency Situations, and our third year dental students sign up for this course in small groups, and they go down in groups of 20, and we have seven scenarios that simulate medical office emergencies. So the things that we talk about, anywhere from syncope to car full code cardiac arrest, is simulated in real time, and the students manage these in real time. And this is how they're getting hands-on medical emergency training above their didactic uh, classroom. Uh, we also do this as a continuing education program. This is what this is, uh, continuing med medical education. And so periodically we put this course on for practitioners in the community to do the same thing. These things are starting to pop up. I'm sure they've got simulation centers here <coughs> in this city. And um, the 10 Minutes Save a Life program is a CE course that's also a human simulation course. It goes through all these things. So they talk about all these things that I just talked about with their algorithms, but they also put you through real-time medical emergency simulation and the insertion of these airway devices like the LMA and the King Airway. So if you have the opportunity to take a simulation emergency course, I advise you to do it because it's the only way that you're really going to get real-time uh, emergency training that really looks like a, uh, a medical emergency that, that, that would occur. Yes, staff can come with you as well. And this is um, what looks like in the control room. They're sitting behind a, um, you know, a, a one-way uh, mirror and the control people are sitting back there and they're looking at this panel and they're controlling all the vital signs parameters of your patient. They can make your patient breathe normally, they can make the patient have a bronchospasm, you can hear the wheezing, you can feel a pulse, you can check the blood pressure, you can listen to uh, the lung, and they can make these parameters change. They can make your patient have hypotension or hypertension, they can make the patient have a seizure. Uh, they're, it's just really uh, amazing what they can do. Uh, with that, so uh, that's kind of an exciting thing. So I really want to thank everybody for their attention. I know this was a really long day, especially this.